Don't let the name deceive you. Hattie's Lunch might be named after a man, but for the past 90 years, it's been run by three generations of women from the same family. I know we're the oldest family-owned bar in Cambridge. We still have a pushdown cash register that was my grandfather's. Ruth Ryan Allen is the current owner. Hattie's Lunch was always like the Irishman's lunch. They'd come for a beer and, you know, a small thing. Ruth's grandmother, Margaret Maggie Fennell, opened the bar in 1934 after her husband, Patrick, AKA Patty, got laid off. We rented it from Massey's Hardware because they wouldn't sell it to my grandmother because number one, she was a woman, number two, she was Irish. We still had the signs, Irish need not apply around in the 30s. Pushing past that adversity, Maggie quickly made her mark in the neighborhood as more than just a bar. It's sort of a home base for a lot of people. And we're lucky for that because there's people that come in and then they tell me about my grandmother. After Maggie passed away in the 1960s, Ruth's mother, Peggy Ryan, stepped behind the bar. The one thing my mother ingrained in me is that you're part of the community. Ruth took over for her mom in the 90s and in 2010 took that lesson and ran with it, starting a 5K that raises money for girls' sports in Cambridge. I say I run the race, which I run the race, I don't run in the race. The first race we had, we had like 50 people. Second race, 75, then 125. We were able to give back close to over 100,000 in the past 13 years. A chance to give back to the community it has served for nearly a century. These girls know that every person that's there is there running for them. It makes the girls feel good too. So it's a win-win on all fronts. It gives you ownership into your community. Keeping up the kinship family tradition in an ever-evolving neighborhood where home prices have soared since this self-declared dive bar opened. I think it's an important part of the history of Cambridge. I also don't want to let this go on my watch. If they don't visit, then we're not here. We won't make 91. <laughs> And every year, Patty sells its signature namesake sweatshirts. It's a tradition they started back in the 1970s. Ruth says they've been spotted all around the world, even as far away as Japan. And that is Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Anthony Everett. Have a great evening. Hope to see you back here again tomorrow night.